Welcome to Evangelism FAQ, a Grow video series addressing many common fears and misunderstandings about mission. Today's question is, is it deceptive to hide our denominational identity on evangelism advertising? Mark, I don't know about you, but I've heard that question a lot. Yeah. People feel very uncomfortable or even like we're being deceptive or dishonest when we don't say, brought to you by the Seventh-day Adventist Church. What? What, what can you say about this? Yeah, that, that is a, a common misconception. I've heard that question asked, but we got to go back to Scripture and really look at uh, the ministry of Christ where he does very much the same thing in many places. For example, in the Gospel of Mark, he cast out demoniacs, and this happens all through Scripture, and then he charged them straightly not to tell anybody that who he was, right? Mm. Um, and then I find it interesting in Matthew chapter 16 when he asked his disciples who he was, and then Peter says, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Notice what he says in Matthew 16, verse 20. It says, Then he commanded his disciples that they should tell no one that he was the, Jesus the Christ. Now, he's not ashamed of who he is, right. but listen to what Desire of Ages tells us about this experience. After Peter's confession, Jesus charged the disciples to tell no man that he was the Christ. This charge was given because of the determined opposition of the scribes and the Pharisees. So right. it wasn't a shame thing, but he knew that if he were, if they, if he were to make that known at this point, it would, it would prematurely cut off his effectiveness in ministry. Oh, yeah. And I, the, the example that comes to my mind is found in Luke 24, that road to Emmaus walk that Jesus had after his resurrection with those disciples who were so downtrodden and confused and mm -hmm. frustrated. And he walks in chapter 24 of the book of Luke, uh, verse 16 says about this walk with Jesus, but their eyes were restrained so that they did not know him. Yeah. Now, was Christ ashamed of who he was to his own disciples? Of course uh -huh. not. But he wanted to convey a message and revealing his identity too early would probably get them thrown off of that Bible-based um, yeah. understanding they That's needed right. to have. In fact, no, we don't only have the example of Christ, but we have specific counsel in the spirit of prophecy about Seventh-day Adventist in public evangelism. Yeah, in our own history, there was a gentleman, he was going to a new field, and mm -hmm. Ellen White wrote him some counsel. And of course, he, he was wrestling with this feeling like, if I'm going to be honest about things, I've just got to put everything out on the table up front. I don't want to let, not reveal all that I believe about who I am. And this is what she wrote to him. She said, now it will be well, my brother, for you to carefully consider these things. And when you labor in your new field, do not feel that as an honest man, you must tell all that you do believe at the very onset, for Christ did not do that way. Hmm. Christ said to his disciples, I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. And there were many things he did not say to them because their education and ideas were of such a character that it would have confused their minds and raised questioning and unbelief that it would have been difficult to remove. Mm -hmm. Now she goes on to say to him, do not feel it your bounden duty, the first thing to tell the people we are Seventh-day Adventists. We believe the seventh day is a Sabbath. We believe in the non-immortality of the soul and thus erect most formidable barriers between you and those you wish to reach. And I think the key is right there. Don't erect formidable barriers between you and those you wish to reach. The idea being your goal is not to represent yourself. Your goal is to walk them as Christ did into the truth of God's word in the most effective way possible. That's right. Even the apostle Paul said, being crafty, I caught you with guile. In other words, he worked in a way that was wisely trying to make sure that he communicated the best message to the people at the pace that they could follow him in yeah. that message. Yeah. Amen. Well, we want to thank you for watching our video series today. And I want to appeal to you as you reach out to witness to other people, don't have that pressure. Don't be concerned about, I have to say everything up front and tell us the whole name of the program or the denomination. Let the Lord guide in all of your ways, step by step, that you can be the most effective in soul winning and the soul winning work he's given you to do. So now may the Lord bless your labors and grow your church.